Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Calvin. We the species are chronologically. Um, we're a couple of weeks away from the first day of winter, so you can all figure it out. Uh, you know, we're into December. I always like to throw that in. Uh, this is a really special uh, interview for me uh, because I, I so subscribe to Doc Rick Rimler, DPM, uh, uh, really subscribe uh, being a holistic podiatrist, uh, we've had, uh, several actually lengthy chats just about the world and in the world of feet and holistic medicine and his journey. And we've, we've, we've discovered lots of commonalities from hyaluronic acid. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Hyaluronic acid to animal house, to knowledge is good to, to the work that he does. Uh, so that's what makes it really fascinating and, and really meaningful and poignant, using a nice word, poignant for me to to get a chance to talk to Doc Rick, uh, 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 because uh, I actually went to my first podiatrist in my entire life uh, for four months ago, and it was a great experience for me. And then, of course, the universe puts us together, uh, and we're together, uh, and, and I, I just think that's even more poignant. Uh, so officially, this is called Doc Reb Rimler, uh, DPM, holistic podiatrist, founder of startwithyourfeet.com. That's very important. Uh, walk strong and live long with Doc Rick. And um, this is my Johnny Carson monologue, and it's done. <laughs> so, Doc Rick, uh, take it away a little background, and, and then we're going to talk about some really important stuff. Sure. Uh, first of all, Calvin, thank you so much for inviting me on your show. When uh, we had our little pre-podcast chat, I was extremely impressed with all of the things that you have done in your life and how even now at your stage of the game, how you're not slowing down, you're still throwing your hat literally all over the place trying, and you're staying vital. And I also want to applaud you for being one of my holistic mishbuka. Well, thank you. You are totally in support of natural treatments. And that is something that is my mission to try to get people to be aware that you know you don't have to accept prescriptions. You can use lifestyle changes and natural treatments with much better safety profile. So... A little bit about my holistic backstory. I've been practicing podiatry since 1987 is when I finished my residency in New York. I came to Florida, South Florida in 1989. I was always wary about the conventional treatments that I was taught in podiatry school, for instance, giving a cortisone shot. I would, even though it works sometimes, it also causes tissue destruction to the area. So in the back of my head, I was going there. I'm not too crazy about this whole method. Fast forward to when I met my wife. And when I met her, she was just about a year into dealing with a fibromyalgia diagnosis and put on five prescriptions, told to go on full disability and told that she would never run again. She had always been a runner. Wow. And she said, no way. She then started researching uh, ways to deal with this. At, at the time that she got diagnosed, it, was just a, it wasn't even a diagnosis. It was just becoming a diagnosis. So it was, she was going up against the odds, against everything that she had been told. And she did not want to adhere to that regimen. So she was my inspiration when i had met when i met her she was already on her way to getting off she had gotten off every single prescription stepwise she addressed many different things including diet especially gluten free to knock out the pain that she was having that made a significant difference notice that there was no prescription involved there it was just eliminating gluten from your diet for 6 weeks and then you can, you can actually reintroduce it once a week afterwards without your body rebooting that autoimmune uh, reaction. But she was able to do everything stepwise. The fact that she was a behavior analyst 
she was able, she does this for a living when she works with kids where she breaks tasks up into very small increments. Then you master that increment, then you move on to the next. So for instance, she was able to only walk one block barely without pain. And this is a woman that was young. She had just given birth to her son. I had met her when her son, my stepson was about four years old and she could barely walk a block, but she walked the block and then she gradually increased the, the, the distance. She gradually increased the speed and along with taking, uh, going uh, organic and vegetarian and gluten-free and a lot, a lot of supplements, she now takes a boxing class where she goes one hour wow. and barely any breaks compared to unfortunately a lot of people out there with these conditions that every other day they're bedridden so imagine the 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 change there that she was able to do so of course this really influenced me and i started to do a holistic approach to my personal life then i said if I know a safer way to go and a better way to go that not just affects the feet, but affects the whole body and gives benefits to the whole body, then it would be a disservice if I didn't do it to my patients. So I was on a mission at that point to create my own niche in podiatry called holistic podiatry. And then I made it uh, my goal to learn treatment protocols for everything that I find in my practice to, to give, it, to give a, a tradition, there's a traditional treatment, but a natural treatment. And I'm not gonna force the natural treatment on my patients, but I'm also gonna tell them the difference. And hopefully they'll at least give my natural treatment a try at the beginning. And then if it doesn't work, okay, if you wanna go the traditional route, so be it. But usually that doesn't happen because luckily I'm able to get them better fast. I, that, that was another thing that I made it a mission of mine because you can't string the person along. You have to get them better fast. This is a, as we were talking about before, Calvin, this is a society that has got a very short attention span. You got to get them better and get them better fast or else they're moving on. So I made it my mission to do that. So I then was able to locate a mentor who I took a course with, a weekend course who is an actual podiatrist that does functional medicine. His name is Dr. Robert Kornfeld. He's in New York City. He was my mentor. I did not follow everything that he espoused. I just took his vision and made it my own and personalized it. And then, of course, over time, this was about in 2011. Over time, I started adding my own unique twist to everything that is part of my lifestyle regimen of start with your feet, which is my website, which is my, which is my lifestyle philosophy. So, so that brings you up to today where I'm about 13 years into the start of that search to create a better approach to my, my patients, but also to give them an ability if they choose to self-empower their health by starting with their feet. And, and part, uh, uh, as I'm reading about you, part, part of your mission uh, uh, and part of the, the Hippocratic Oath and in, in, in the fact that what you do. By the way, the other, the other thing, uh, uh, listen, uh, you know, I'm, I'm two years away from 80 and, and I'm functioning at such a high level because there are so many elements that you're going to talk about that I, in my own little microcosmic world, I have a pharmacy background that I've been doing. So the right lifestyle, the right lifestyle, you're going to talk about that. Uh, it, it, and you started early enough and it, it'll guide you through middle and, and septuagenarian and octogenarian stuff because, you know, I'm functioning at a high level, as you said, and I thank you for those. Thank you for that. But so it, you, what I'm trying to say is what you're going to talk about it works. It works. It certainly does. And it also, as a matter of fact, there's a new field called epigenetics, which is lifestyle factors that influence your genetics. In the past, people would say, 
I have bad genetics. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, they've done, there's a whole field called epigenetics and they have determined that lifestyle factors, exercise, nutrition, vitamins and supplements, they can factor into your genetics and how they express themselves. So you have a lot of control over your bad genetics should you choose to do so. And I just want people to open their eyes to realize that they do not have to accept bad genetics. They can, there's a lot in their power of what they can do. And as you mentioned, the Hippocratic Oath, as a doctor, I took the Hippocratic Oath. And the main premise of that is first, do no harm. And that is why the most important thing for me is whatever I do for a patient, I want to make sure that they don't land in the hospital from my treatments. And that can certainly happen rather easily for an older person, for instance, coming in with a arthritis pain and 30 years ago, my, me recommending a prescription or even an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory and as a potential side effect, they could end up in the hospital with a stomach ulcer or intestinal ulcer from a problem that started that was on the foot. And, and so that's why I was always very uneasy about those treatments. And I was such, so glad to find out, oh, wait a second, there's an alternative. And not just that, you can get rid of the problem safely and fast. And, I, and that was my goal, to make sure that I could do both of those things. So that's the Hippocratic Oath for me in action. And, and you mentioned uh, people don't realize, uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, you know you know, they have a pain and, and they start popping these NSAIDs and, and even Tylenol. Uh, you know, you take enough of that stuff and in the day, it could kill your kidney, I mean, your your liver. Right. And it's dangerous stuff. Uh, and, and and that's why people really need the 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 guidance. You know, you have a pain in your ankle, uh, just don't pop an NSAID. And because and the problems, I mean, uh, I, I've been in tune to, acetaminophen and the problems it can cause uh and and it's loaded into just about every kind of combination of analgesic out there anti-inflammatory exactly and that's what and that's why after i get rid of the problem i like to put all of my patients on a wellness protocol even if they're not holistic minded as you and i are uh what i do is i try well of course the first time they come in, I'm going to identify their foot type. So that's going to be able to tell them information, whether they should wear leather shoes or rubber sole shoes, whether they should, it's safe for them to walk on the floor barefoot or not, you know, not counting any medical conditions that would preclude that. But I try to get the right foundation under their foot. I design my own orthotic. That's an economical orthotic that I do in my office. I do it on my online store. And I'm proud of that because I want patients to be able to have the right foundation under their foot that's comfortable, but it's also doing something to reduce motion, promote stability, reduce injuries. So at the very least, I at least attempt to try to get them into a Doc Rick orthotic. And then at the very least, I try to put everybody on a 50 billion probiotic. Even if they're on a blood thinner, that will not thin the blood as opposed to a lot of the natural anti-inflammatories that will thin the blood. So as a doctor, I'm still gonna be looking at drug to supplement interactions. That's why I don't advise people to do this on their own because little do, would they know that maybe they're making their blood too thin if they're on a prescription blood thinner and then they're taking a lot of fish oil or curcumin or garlic, then you don't wanna thin the blood out too much. So that's why do it under a doctor's supervision. He'll give you the, the guidance. Then you're on, then you could go off on your own. I love, I love to send my patient off with some knowledge with a pair of orthotics. And hopefully they don't come back for five years until they need a new pair, which I give them a discount on the second time anyway. Right. So I, at the very least, I want to try to keep inflammation down because inflammation causes 90% of all health problems in the body not just the foot. So you're talking about 90% of all things are related to inflammation, including heart disease and Alzheimer's. 
So you want to try to keep that inflammation down, but in a safe way, that's not going to land you in the hospital. That's not going to cause kidney disease. That's not going to cause gluten sensitivity. That's not going to cause hypertension. So you want to do things in a safe manner. So that is my, that's my mission at the very least to try to get them onto a path where they can, and if they're really good, they can attempt to try to deal with whatever condition they have using the lifestyle techniques, the epigenetics. And then hopefully they can go just like what my wife did. She went off every prescription one at a time in, in a step-by-step -step fashion. People can do the same thing when you're dealing with high blood pressure. There are certain, a lot of things to do for that. So that's not my, that's not my uh, realm, but certainly by the thing that gives me gratification is that when I'm sending my patient off with the orthotic and the probiotic, I know I'm reducing their chances of stroke and heart attack just by doing that. Why? Because I'm making the endothelium, the inside of the blood, the blood vessels of the arteries smoother, less inflamed. So if they should have a clumpy plaque floating around uh, in, their, in their bloodstream, it's less likely to deposit on the wall to cause narrowing of the arteries, which can then cause a stroke or a heart attack. Wow. Um, by the way, uh, you said some stuff that is so um, that is so key. You know, the blood thinner thing, and uh, I'm on a blood thinner because you know I've got AFib, and uh, so I'm aware of, of things you would never in a million years: garlic, vitamin E, uh, uh, fish oil. I mean, this stuff thins the blood. And you, you just come, you know, if you're, if you're not getting the right kind of advice, right. guidance as you give, uh, uh, people just, and, and, and that's why the OTC world can be dangerous because it's, um, and, and, and it's a little, Hey, knowledge is good. You know, I got to quote that and listening to you. So, uh, says, so says Mr. Faber. That's right. Emil Faber. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Animal House. People might know what we're quoting, but it's Animal House. That's we could talk about that for about an hour, but we won't. <laughs> um, uh, can you make some comments uh, uh, about the the need for really good supportive shoes? Yeah, uh, just a couple of comments on shoes. The first thing is that most of my patients that come in are in the wrong size shoe. They think their longest toe must be abutting to the end of the shoe, and that's not the case. You actually need an inch from your longest toe, whether it's the first, second, or third toe, to the end of the shoe. And a simple visual is the width of your thumb is roughly an inch. And you take your thumb, push down from your longest toe, and you want to see the shoe on the other side of your thumb. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the majority of the shoes out there are made very poorly. And it wouldn't take much for the shoe company to put a 10 cent piece of plastic behind the heel to make it firm. Most shoes are not like that. I will say that part of the shoe is called the counter of the shoe. I recommend anybody who's going to be wearing shoes before you buy any new shoe, go right to the counter of the shoe. Make sure you can't squeeze your thumb and, and index finger together like you could with a flimsy sneaker where they come together. You want resistance. You want to be able to not do too much squeezing. By doing that, when you lace up or use a Velcro to push yourself back away from the front of the foot, you're also doing step one of the Doc Rick stability uh, tandem, which involves a firm countered shoe. So you get pushed back. So the counter of the shoe is gonna hold your heel from behind. So whether you have a flat foot or a hard foot, it's gonna promote stability. It will keep your foot from moving forward also. Then part two of the Doc Rick stability is take that insole out and put an orthotic in. So then you get your proper foundation under the foot, whether you're a flat foot or a hard foot, the right material, the right prescription goes in there. And then you have the one, two punch to promote stability, not just of your foot, your ankle, your knee, your hip, and your lower back. So it's a combination of all of that. And so that is what I try to uh, educate all of my patients on the proper size length. Also, if you have a bunion or a fleshy foot or swelling, then you have to consider a wide width. And so that's going to, you're not going to be able to get that as easily. You have to go out of your way to get it, but you need to make sure the, the, the width 
corresponds to your foot and the lane. You want a firm counter. You want to stay away from loafers. You want a lace or a Velcro. And you want the ability to play the piano with your toes. Wow. On the length of your shoe. So that's that's my shoe shtick. Wow. Wow. It's funny. My father, my father was a shoe salesman for 40 years. And I mean, the old fashioned kind, I climbed up a ladder to get a pair of shoes and put it on, (laughs) trying to fit. I mean, nobody does that anymore. I don't even know if they have those kind of. It's called a Brannock device. And I have one in my office and I actually measure my patient's uh, feet when I'm doing the orthotics. That little little metal thing. and The metal metal thing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. He was an old fashioned shoe salesman. The other thing, here's something else about shoes. People think that the size that they were in grade school or high school, let's say, is the same size they will always be. And of course, that's not true. Your foot gets longer and wider. You always have to, and you also have to treat every shoe individually because these days they're made in, a, in many different countries with many different templates. So every shoe, uh, certain brands were in, were in smaller, certain brands won longer. So just don't don't worry about the size. Don't be married to the size. Just get an approximate size. Then put your foot in there and do the thumb test. And then you really know if it's the right size or not. Okay. And you just say a few more things to kind of clarify and go over Dr. Rick's orthotics and, and really define that and what you're Yeah, doing. in regards to that. So that was always my passion going into podiatry. It was not to be a gun, it was not to be a surgeon. It was the biomechanical part. And I'm happy to say that I have taken things over time from school, from the training that I had in school, from from lectures that I have attended, plus my own biomechanical theories, some of them that have come to me while I was asleep and dreaming. But all of these things put together, I have my own biomechanical theories. Then with that, I went to an orthotic lab. And I said, this is my vision. I want to make an economical orthotic that's not $800. I want to do it nice and quick in my office. I want to be able to offer that same product online. And I would luckily, I was able to work with a lab named Diafoot. They make diabetic, they're my diabetic shoe supplier, but they have an orthotic lab. They were able to accommodate and make my vision come true. So I wanted to make an accessible orthotic and something that does something, something that's comfortable and that has prescriptions in them to then be able to make that foot stable. And so that is one of my big accomplishments. And now it is my mission to try to get people aware that no, they don't have to spend $800, but at the same time, don't trust the Dr. Scholl kiosks that you stand on and do a footprint that prints out something based on the footprint. That's only gonna basically tell, that machine's gonna look at the footprint and say, I think it's a flat foot or I think it's a hard foot. It's going to pump it out. But Calvin, I have to tell you, when I look at the patient's foot from the side and I get that same impression that the machine gets, I get an idea. Then when I look at the foot from behind, that's when I really can get my info. And I can tell you that it doesn't always correspond to that footprint. So I, I look, it looks like the foot's very flat. Then I see how it's functioning. I'm going, wow, that's a hard foot, but it has a low arch. So you can't, all of this AI, artificial intelligence and machinery, nothing takes the place of some good old fashioned uh, person to person contact to get that correct information going. So that's my, that's my product that I have designed. I've been using it successfully in my office for about eight years. I'm proud to offer it on my online store, a very economical price. They last about three to five years. Oh. And I'll put that up against anybody's orthotic that's out there because this is where my most of my energy has gone into that design and coming up with a couple of universal prescriptions, I call them, so that the online one does not require me to do a face-to-face, but I'm just giving a couple of choices of material with the universal prescriptions built in and both universal prescriptions promote stability. So I, I will hold that against a prescription orthotic. I'll hold that against any over-the-counter orthotic. And may the best man win. Perfect. Perfect. Um, another key aspect to you, and we talked about this 
uh, is your interval training, this 12 minute workout, which every, every human can do. It's 12 minutes. How about talking about that and how yeah. important it is? Calvin, that is my signature cause that I, I'm going to spend the rest of my life talking about. That's going to be the, one of the first things that I'm going to talk about because that doing that regular let's just say exercise in general aerobic exercise and not smoking cigarettes are the two most important things you can do for your health so now there's a big hurdle when patients go to the doctor or they're listening to media and they say you need to exercise i'm talking about the aerobic part not the weight training three to five times a week 30 40 60 minutes so maybe January, the month of January, when everyone does their New Year's resolutions, they're all doing it for the first month. Then it fades. And I can understand that because it's a very big time uh, block to put aside. When I found out about this interval training method, and this was, again, this was brought, um, this, I took this method from an anti-aging doctor named Dr. Al Sears. He's an MD, anti-aging doctor in Royal Palm Beach. And he has this method called PACE, progressively accelerating cardiopulmonary exertion. And he has a protocol. And I basically started doing that protocol as soon as I found out about it at age 50. And now I'm age 63. And I can tell you that I'm healthier now than when I was 50. So I know that it works. And the thing that's a beautiful thing about it, I, I actually took that, took that whole idea and made it, again, I, like, I make everything my own. I tried, so I made it more realistic because I want anybody, someone that's an athlete, someone that's young, or somebody that's in a wheelchair that can all, that can just sit on a chair and use a floor pedal. They can do it too. It only takes 12 minutes. Wow. You could, and the key thing is do that Monday through Friday. Do it in the morning if you have to go to work or school. Do it anytime. Otherwise, if you have all day on your hand, whatever works for you. But the reason I like to emphasize the morning is because that's before the distractions. At the end of the day, you have to go to the store. You have to go pick up the kids. You have to go walk the dog. You have to do all these things. So do it regularly in the morning. So it only takes 12 minutes. So this is the way it works. I'll tell you how I do it. I go. You, so you want to do it close to home? so that you only need to wake up 12 minutes earlier in the morning. I go out onto my street, I, I, I sprint for 20 seconds. Then I walk for about a minute, catch my breath. Then I go the other way 20 seconds. I do that six times. Then the final three, 15 second sprints and a minute walk after each one. However, when I do the 15 second, as opposed to the 20, I'm doing it at a faster speed. By doing it faster, that's what Dr. Sears is talking about as where you're building the body up as opposed to a marathon long distance runner that wears the body down. So this technique is going to increase the strength of your lungs and heart. It's going to improve oxygenation because of the change of speeds. It's going to um, give a, lead to a 12 hour fat afterburn. So if you're judicious with not too much white flour in your diet and your hormones check out all right, then you can lose weight or at the very least not gain weight. And it's anti-aging. It keeps your chromosomes long. If your chromosomes stay long, you will not age as fast. So it's going to promote vitality and longevity. And that to me is my signature cause. And of course, my product goes along with it. It's helping you do that cause along with your daily living activities, walking comfortably, even walking up and down the aisles of the grocery store. So you can do it in many forms. So not everybody can run or, or do that. You can do it in the swimming pool swimming. You can do it on an exercise bike. If you, you can just get a floor pedal. And I have 90 year old patients that I teach this to. They sit in a regular chair, they get a $30 floor pedal and they do their little pedals. They might not be able to go very fast, but the whole concept is go fast at the 20, go faster at the 15. And as a matter of fact, if you can't handle the 20 to 15 uh, second protocol, 
You can go 15 to 10. You can go 10 to 5. The bottom line is that you just have to add up the fast intervals to, to total two minutes. And based and as long as you get two minutes of the fast, you're going to do more for yourself than if you do 60 minutes at a at a at a at a walk at one speed. Because you that's also good. You're going to be and if someone wants to do a, an hour of aerobic exercise, I'm going to recommend walking rather than running because it's going to be less stress on your body and on your heart. You're actually going to be better for you're going to do better. A brisk walk is better than a run. But if you can come, if you have a lot of time on your hands, you do your interval training at the beginning of your workout and then walk for the next 45 minutes if you have an hour to kill. So that's fine. So that is the, the thing that you can play around with it. There's there are studies done uh, that support this. Um, and you are able to make a profound impact on so many different levels just by doing that. So that is my signature cause. And that's why I want people to realize you don't have to spend an hour. You just need to spend 12 minutes. So right. therefore do it Monday through Friday and then hit the gym on the weekends and do your weight resistance training to build up your muscle, your musculature to ward off osteoporosis, arthritis, and keep your posture better. And that is going to be important also along with stretching. The three parts of exercise are aerobic, resistance training, and stretching stretching your back every day, stretching your Achilles every day. So that's my inter that's my number one cause that I really like to educate people on. And that's why I'm going on other podcasts to, ed to educate your audience, Calvin, that, you know what, I don't need to spend an hour. I only need 12 minutes. And, and I don't, I, I challenge anybody that wow. tell me that they don't have 12 minutes to spare. Correct. Wow. By the way, it's such a key to life. You know, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, exercise. I, I think I mentioned to you the last time we spoke, uh, I wanted to run, there's a lab in New York that you can walk in off the street and then measure your telomeres, you know, the, right. tip of the chromosomes. And, and, and I know I have a, I do a lot of exercise, the whole, you know, stretching the weights and, and the aerobics and uh, what you're preaching, the 12 minute thing, it's so important because it keeps that telomere that protects your your chromosome it's like the tip of a shoelace and it keeps yeah. it it keeps it, keep, it, it keeps it long it keeps yeah it long. yeah so what you're saying um it's funny i'm listening to you and, and I, I wanted to do i wanted to do a dramatic thing for people who are listening here and to recreate a scene from moonstruck when Cher slaps nicholas cage so <laughs> snap out of it well, it's like what you're saying with this 12 minute interval, snap out of it because this stuff really, really works. Snap out of it. All right. Before we continue, uh, just to go a little bit off topic, I forewarned you, I, I might do this. Uh, it's one of my favorite questions. I, I love to ask it. You don't even have to answer it. Uh, it it's a one word uh, answer. And here it goes. Uh, excluding family or friends. Somebody living or dead you'd like to spend a day with? Mm, that's a good one. There could um, be more than one. It doesn't there's no rules here. It is a good one. That's a good one. That's it a is. Good one. Who, who do I want to spend a day with? Well, I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my first memory. How's that? The Beatles were my first memory. So let's go with John Lennon. Sure. People say that I look a little bit like you do. Um, what my first memory was my aunt taking me to see Hard Day's Night when I was four years old. Wow. And that influenced the way my influenced my personality, influenced my hair. My hair is that way. And that's that's my persona. So if I had a day, I would spend it with John Lennon. As a matter of fact, sadly, when I went to podiatry school in new york city i had a rent stabilized apartment three blocks away from where he lived and had got on the, central park west and seven wow. i lived three blocks away and one of the first things i did when i moved in is i went to the site where he got shot then i went across the street to central park to where strawberry fields was and did a little shema for yeah. him 
yeah. and paid my respects. But that would be, and I know that he's a controversial guy, but the thing that I loved about him, besides the music, which is such a big part of my life, but he stood for peace and love. And that's what we need more of in the world. So I'm going to go yeah. with him. Great answer. By the way, great answer. And you do look like him, Mike, you know, right down to the specs, you know, the eye. Wow, the John Lennon specs, it was a whole style thing. Exactly. All right, moving along. Uh, you're you're really into, uh, and so am I, and, and again, that's more of our commonality. You're really into organic nutrition. Uh, and, and that's what's so progressive about you. And, and in fact, you're a holistic podiatrist. You know, it's the feet, but you're you're talking about the whole body. Uh, and, and so some comments on uh, organic nutrition. Sure. Okay. So the first thing is, is that the soil that we have today is not the soil from 50 years ago. The minerals are all depleted because of the farming techniques. And it would be nice if we can go back to the local farmers rather than these big conglomerates. And, you, and every community goes locally to get their produce. That would be the goal in the future. And it seems to be trending that way. Happy to say it seems to be starting. So the reason for organic is very simple. No pesticides. Pesticides are being sprayed on everything these days and we're eating it. And that is causing many autoimmune diseases and cancer, uh, et cetera, causing all sorts of health problems. So it's going to cost more money to buy organic. Now, you don't necessarily have to get everything organic. There are lists, the dirty dozen list of the things that you have to buy organic, the clean 15 list that you can get away with not having to buy organic. But the bottom line is you want to put things, you want to look at labels. You want to eat real food. You don't want to eat foods that are genetically modified or bioengineered that causes cancer. And you want to be able to have the real food that your DNA in your body recognizes from going back to your ancestors. Anything that's foreign, including a prescription, including a genetically modified piece of food, your body at the very least, at the very least, if you're lucky, might treat it as an, an invader. You might get an autoimmune reaction. Even worse, you can get cancer from it. So what I say is spend a little bit more money now eating cleanly and organically and then spending more, including your life down the line if you get a disease or in the hospital or pass away prematurely. So put your money into yourself rather than giving it to the hospital or the, the doctor, that the oncologist that takes care of you. So that's, what I, that's the big point I like to make on that. The other, the other thing I like to talk about with nutrition is that there's only one type of bread. So the best thing to keep inflammation down nutrition-wise is reducing white flour, which is found in bread, cookies, cake, pastries, pasta. It's what the, staple, the standard American diet, SAD, that's what that is all going into. So you want to keep that to as low a level as possible. So the thing that you want to do is you want to try to eat bread that's not going to raise inflammation. Well, guess what, Calvin? Gluten-free bread even raises inflammation. So right. if you are home and you have control over what you're eating, there's only one good category of bread. It's called sprouted bread. It is seven-day-old wheat that it looks like bread, it tastes like bread, but miraculously inside your body, it acts like a vegetable. Vegetables don't raise your blood sugar and they don't turn to fat. Whereas anything with white flour will raise your blood sugar and turn to fat. So you're giving yourself a big boost just by doing that. If you are out, there's only there are only three good breads when you're out as a choice. They're not going to offer sprouted in the store in the restaurant. But you if you can get sourdough, pumpernickel, or rye, those are the three safest. People think white, whole wheat is good. It really isn't. It has a little bit more fiber than white bread, but it really isn't much better. It's going to raise your sugar just the same. It's going to, you know, maybe a little less, but it's going to turn to fat just the same. So that is a, an important point. I try to teach my patients about sprouted bread. I try to teach them about eating organic. And 
Uh, the, the, the third big thing is talking about water, the water that we drink, the container that we put it in. Plastic containers have phytoestrogens that go in your body and that can cause cancer. Uh, you, the, these bottled waters, you don't want to drink bottled water. You want to put water in glass or ceramic or stainless steel. Then you also want clean water. There are only two clean waters. One is distilled water and one is reverse osmosis water. I have a reverse osmosis water machine. It has four filters in it. It filters out everything. It's the purest water you can drink. I put it in my, in my stainless steel uh, water container and bring it to work and I drink it all day. Uh, that is the best water that you can drink. You have to realize that you want to drink a lot of water all day because your body is majority water. Your cells will function better in, a, in an environment that's not dehydrated. So you want to be drinking a lot of clean water. When you drink clean water, though, you do need to supplement the trace minerals that you're losing when it's filtered out. So therefore, what I do is I take a little bit of Himalayan crystal salts and put it in my water in the morning when I'm taking my supplements. So I'm getting my trace minerals that way. And so I'm not depriving myself of that. So that's a, that's a big, big thing also. So the organic eating, the sprouted bread and reverse osmosis water. If those are three key points I like to make on nutrition, things that people do are not really aware of. Uh, did you see me taking notes? I do. I'm, I'm literally uh, here I am interviewing you and I'm taking notes on what you're saying because uh, and and um, I'm I'm down for this the, the bread thing. I you know uh, uh, it's uh, interesting. Uh, you'll, uh, you you uh, I just read three nights ago. It scared the hell out of me. It, it goes with what you're saying. Uh, two things. They actually found traces of plastic in in mother's breast milk. First time. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yep. First time, and two nights ago, I read that they actually, uh, and they, they have to digest what it means, but they actually found uh, traces of plastic and cardiac tissue. That's new. What what that means, who the hell knows what it means, it, it ain't good. Uh, and, and, and I'm a big culprit of drinking water from uh, plastic, but you know what? Um, you, I, I swear to you, you've changed because uh, I have water on my night table and I'm forever drinking it, but it's all bottled water. But uh, and by the way, I, we have a, a quadruple filter system here in the house. So yep. just put it in some glass, stainless steel, or ceramic, yeah. and you're good to go. Yep. So uh, and we've had this now like for ten years, uh, and and it, it, it's. It, but by the way, it, it tastes nice. You know, it tastes nice. It so tastes pure. It tastes pure. Yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite uh, supplements? Um, I do. I do. I have the Doc Rick Big Cinco, I call it, plus one. So the Big Five plus one. I like to say the Big Cinco because I'm in South Florida. There's a big Spanish population. Sure. sure. Uh, I just like to make things a little bit unique on my approach. So probiotic is number one. So a 50 billion probiotic. I just had a patient last week saying, well, I have some tea that has some probiotic in it. I said, that's great, but that's hardly anything. You need to take a 50 billion with a B probiotic supplement that has bifido and lactobacteria in it so that they, those healthy bacteria can do a good job for you in your gut. They can populate your gut for you. And what they're going to do is they're going to help digest your food to small particles to reduce, to improve uh, absorption of it, prevent a, a autoimmune reaction, what you get with gluten sensitivity. It's going to boost your immune system because the gut plays a role in the majority of your immune system and it reduces musculoskeletal pain, which is a lot of reason why patients come to me. So you're killing so many birds with one stone right there with the probiotic and it doesn't interfere with blood thinning. So that's number one. Number two is a natural anti-inflammatory of choice. For instance, fish oil, curcumin, garlic, kaolic garlic, uh, 
Um, all of these things are terrific um, as long as you're not on a blood thinner. The point I like to make about curcumin is that it must have uh, an ingredient in it to bring it into the cells. Otherwise, it's not bioavailable. Usually they use black pepper called bioperine. Otherwise, they use uh, the brand that I used has fenugreek, which helps get it into the cell. It actually can cross the blood brain barrier with that. So I'm trying to get it into my brain too, to reduce chance of Alzheimer's. And fish oil, don't buy it at, at the drugstore. Don't buy it any old place. There are so many impurities in fish oil. You have to get a very top level brand that is pure, that does not have mercury in it and fillers. One such brand is, is Nordic Naturals. It goes, it's, uh, it's probably the best brand you can get. And Car Carlson is another good brand. But you certainly don't want to get the, low, the, wall, the Walmart brand of fish oil. You don't want that. It has to be pure. So that so those are the ones. So both of the probiotic and the natural anti-inflammatories are going to be your one-two punch on reducing inflammation, which causes 90% of all health problems. Then number three, let's say, is going to be vitamin D3. So vitamin D3 plays a role in a hundred different functions in your body. They actually consider it a hormone. You want to get that level up very high, the high level of normal, not the low. They did studies where anybody that had a vitamin D, I believe it was over 50. It might've been even as low as 40, but let's just say 50 did not die from COVID just by having a vitamin D above the level of 50. Wow. So wow. get that vitamin D over the, so vitamin D3, I usually recommend 5,000 units a day. It's fat soluble. So you do have to get a blood test to make sure you don't go too high. But, the, but you really have a large room of, uh, on the range, get that, get that number at least over 50, if not closer to 80, 90. And you're gonna help yourself on so many different levels, of course, including osteoporosis, but it also prevents, and it plays a role in cancer reduction and diabetes too. So that's another one, vitamin D3. So vitamin C is another one liposomal vitamin C is the one I recommend because most vitamin C is ascorbic acid and ascorbic acid can irritate the stomach, cause stomach upset, diarrhea, and it also taken a lot of it can affect the kidneys and cause kidney stones. So liposomal vitamin C, so liposomal is the delivery form of the vitamin C so that it goes into the cells, does not cause the side effects. You can take a higher dose if you needed to. If you're getting a cold, you can take a higher dose. You wanna be taking that liposomal C to, uh, to help with, your, with the, the cell structure, the collagen in your body, and also to boost your immune system. So you wanna be taking one that's not gonna cause side effects. So that's why liposomal is the way to go. And then another one that's a big one for me is CoQ10 which is uh, the gasoline that powers all of your cells. There are two types of CoQ10. The bioavailable form is called ubiquinol, N-O-L, as opposed to ubiquinone, N-O-N-E at the end. You want the ubiquinol, it's bioavailable, it's gonna get into your cells and it's gonna power your cells. It's especially important for your brain, your heart and your nerves. Those have the most mitochondria and those you wanna feed them with gasoline so they're functioning well. The final one besides the big Cinco is a multivitamin that is not Centrum, which is artificial. You want a food-based multi or what I personally take is wheatgrass juice tablets. Wheatgrass is basically the chlorophyll uh, in that similar to chlorella and spirulina is basically you're ingesting the sun and chlorophyll, chlorophyll's structure is the same as your blood hemoglobin structure. Instead of it being iron, it's magnesium in the center. So basically you're taking something that's, you're giving yourself the sun into your body and you're basically oxygenating your blood with that. So those are my big Cinco plus one. Wow, more notes, more notes. <laughs> uh, actually the good news is uh, I, I've got to look and see but everything that you recommended, I take. But I don't know if it's the right. I, I got to research that. Uh, by the way, my D3, 
uh, I just got back my uh, 37. It's it's the highest it's been. It's, okay. So you need you need to take a lot more D3. Yeah, and you know I'm, I'm I, I take it and you know I take it in, also in combination with calcium. It helps the absorption of D to each help each other get absorbed. But this is the highest it's been for me, like in years and years. So I'm working to get it. You know. Yeah. Uh, of course. I per I personally take five thousand international units six days a week instead of seven because i'm like at the upper range so i just want to make sure that i'm below right. the upper range right. so my, right. my level was in the 80s wow wow so i i, I try um, um uh um, i've been trying but this is the best i've been now in years 37 good so you'll do better yeah so i'll do better all right last we could gosh we could Talk and talk, uh, we can. Um, you do uh, you you do a corporate wellness program. Talk about that because people are listening and uh, 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 I, I, it's what you do is, is so crucial. It just is to life. Talk about your corporate wellness program. Thank you. So I have a corporate wellness slash group wellness webinar presentation that I'm going to be launching in early 2024. And it's going to basically, for, for businesses, large and small, I can give a, a presentation a half an hour or an hour. And for groups, I can do a half an hour or an hour. And basically talking about the start with your feet lifestyle, the start with your feet lifestyle. The business talk is called your business benefits when you start with your feet. And it's a lot of the things we discussed today, tailored towards reducing absenteeism, and in regards to the overall health that I talk about with the lifestyle, but also most notably, and one of the number one reasons for uh, absenteeism at work is back injuries. And you do want to get the back treated by someone like an orthopedist, a chiropractor, a physiatrist, a physical therapist. But wouldn't it be great to know what the right foundation is under your foot so that you can positively affect your back too. So I talk about that too. I wanna to make sure that people don't uh, miss work for their back. So you wanna know uh, that's where the foot comes in and you wanna do some healthy things in regards to your lifestyle so that you're not getting sick all the time. So that's a, your business benefits when you start with your feet. Then I have a few other uh, talks that I can do too. Well, uh, any kind of health-minded group, a religious group, any group that wants to learn to get healthier. I can talk about walk strong and live long. I can talk about walk strong for weight loss. And I can talk about start with your feet, the lifestyle, which um, um, uh, this is the first time I'm announcing it, but that's going to be a book book in 2024. Oh, great. Great. Wow. Um all right, two pages of notes, which is right up there. Uh, while you're talking, I'm like, I just took two pages of notes. Uh, just to remind everybody, you do have a podcast. It's called Holistic Strides. Um, and where can people, uh, it's going to be, where can people? Uh, yeah, so that that that's my own podcast. Right now, I'm just laying out a lot of content. I'm putting it out twice a month. It's about a 30 minute, 25 minute, 30 minute show. Right now, it's just me down the line. I'll start having guests on. And when I do, I'll invite you on, Calvin. But right Pleasure. now, I'm just laying, I have a lot of content that I'm just laying down. And so it goes out twice, twice a month. It's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple. You can watch it, you can listen to it either. Uh, and the easiest way to, to view it is probably to go on the Start With Your Feet website, go on the blog page and just put your, when you do, when you go on the blog page, you can get a free ebook download of my interval training ebook. Just by putting your email on the website, you will get the weekly content that I put out and it'll come right to your inbox so you don't have to search for it. Which I did already today. <laughs> I saw that. I, I, saw that. I saw you signed up. I did. I did. I did. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. So um, we're done uh, for now. Uh, I'm officially inviting you to come back in any shape, way, form. 
in any panels, content, whatever, because th this this uh, this could be an ongoing thing. Maybe someday we can talk about Animal House, uh, but that's on the back burner. But uh, I, I can't thank you enough, Rick. Uh, you, you've been perfectly delightful and, and mind expansive. Uh, and it's so, everything you said is just so important to life, you know, uh, to life. Thank you so much for your time and your graciousness. Thank you, Calvin. Let me just say one thing that I had a patient who was an NYU uh, business professor early on in my career. And he told me that he gives a lecture to his students. It's called Health, Love, and Money. The importance of health is number one, then love, then money. So he was talking to his students who were business students, money is number three. Well, recently I, I, I tweaked that. So now I am call, I'm gonna go health, love, peace, and money. I'm gonna throw peace in there because that, you need to have all of those things going. So health, of course, you want your health to be as optimal as possible. Love, of course, you want as many loved ones, friends, family, significant others in your life that you, that the sky's the limit on the number of people that you can have love for. Peace with yourself, to be at, to be at Zen with yourself, to be not in a state of turmoil. You want to have that going too. You want to be able to deflect all the stress that comes your way like Teflon and have it bounce off you. You want to have peace with yourself, peace with your friends, peace with your family, peace with your neighbors. I hope the Middle East could listen to that philosophy. And then fourth comes money. That comes number four on the priorities. As you know, you can't take the money with you. You keep your health good, you'll live longer. If you have love in your life, you'll live longer. If you have peace in your life, you'll live longer. Then the, the, love, the, the money comes after that. Funny you said that because um, I just finished, as you know, I, I published my second novel, but I, I have a, a, a lot of references to the three things that are important for my character. Uh, uh, it, it's health, love, and spirit. You there know, you, go. you can tie yeah. that into to peace. Very, sim very similar. Yeah, it's very similar. Uh, it's interesting. I, I wrote about that. So um, come back. Uh, uh, Certainly. And, and happy healthy uh i'm gonna actually stop the recording now don't leave we'll do a two minute wrap but by the way this was great uh actually it was sumptuous which is one of my favorite words this was sumptuous it was good stuff thank you rick thanks calvin <laughs>